like I said, I'm a dietitian. My really, I specialize in diabetes. Um, but today we are going to talk about healthy eating on a budget. Is that what you all expected? Mm -hmm. Good. That's a good thing too. Okay. Um, it's just interesting how um, there was a study done, and it showed that um, people who are have extra money might shop at one grocery store and when they don't have a lot of extra money they shop at another grocery store and really how our our money drives what we buy obviously but it also drives the kind of foods that we buy so if I only have two dollars to spend and I need and I'm starving someone might be more apt to go to McDonald's and get a burger and fries rather than go to quick drip and get a couple of apples and a piece of string cheese do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So our way of thinking is, I want more bang for my buck. But in reality, um, you can, you really can shop, if you're shopping smart, you can eat healthy. Um, you have to be a little savvy. It takes a little bit of time. Um, and it does take some preparation. So really what I'm talking about is getting away from some of the convenience type foods and doing more scratch cooking. Do you guys do scratch cooking? Yeah, pretty much. No. <laughs> yes. You do. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Because that's, when we talk about just eating healthy, that's really what we're talking about. Um, that it, we're talking about for, for health, for weight, for high blood pressure, for diabetes, for high cholesterol. It really has to be more scratch cooking. And I know that takes time, but it doesn't have to be complicated. And we'll talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> so. Our diet doesn't have to be prisoner to that. All right, ooh, there was a comparison done. Um, this was done by Tufts University, and it was a study that they took a day's worth of eating of either the dietary guidelines, so trying to eat more of a healthy diet, versus the alternative diet, which was more convenience type foods. So really heavy on those convenience type foods. And the healthy eating was cheaper at every meal except for snacking and it came in 43% cheaper for a whole day's menu. So it really, this study showed that um, if you really can eat healthy um, and still watch your dollars, and really the difference in calories wasn't huge, you know, well, you know, 300 calories, but look at the difference in fat. 16 grams of saturated fat, saturated fat of course being the bad fat, that's the one that clogs your arteries, um, on the healthy diet versus 35 grams on the more convenience type foods. Um, sodium was a big difference that was 1900 on the healthy diet versus 3600 on the convenience type foods. And that's really when it comes to convenience type foods, that's a huge issue is the amount of salt that they put in there. Much higher in fiber for eating healthy because it is more fruits and vegetables and fruits and vegetables have more naturally occurring fiber. Um, and then protein wasn't too far off, and that's usually not something that we worry about all too much. Okay, so the trick is um, the healthy menu does require a little more preparation and more cooking from scratch, like we had talked about before. And we really are a society of convenience foods, aren't we? Yeah. Convenient. Right? Yeah. And because we're in a rush, right? Yeah. Especially young parents. Yes. And if you're working, and if you got a lot going on. Yeah, so, and unfortunately, the kids of those parents are learning that, so it's really, we're kind of snowballing this. They think that it's normal that you eat chicken nuggets and TV dinners and, you know, those kinds of things. But again, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, okay. Um, so, cooking more from scratch, buying in bulk now, that can be good and bad, depending on how many people are in your house and depending on expiration dates. We're gonna talk about that. Um, stocking up on certain things when they go on sale. Obviously, we don't wanna stock up on our fresh produce just because that's on sale because it'll probably go bad before I can eat it all. So that's an issue that we'll talk about as well. I'm a huge fan of frozen vegetables. There's a lot of great frozen fruit now as well. And that's something that if it does go on sale, that you can put in your freezer for a little time versus getting it fresh. And quite frankly, our frozen vegetables, 
might even be better for us sometimes than the fresh because our fresh are traveling on a truck probably for X number of weeks to get to us where those frozen vegetables are flash frozen right away. <clears throat> so that is not, um, I'm a huge fan especially of those um, steam fresh bags that for people with one or two in their household just to be able to put one of those in the microwave. There's really no reason to not eat vegetables. It's not like every time I eat a carrot, I've got to peel it and wash it and wash my celery. And it's not, you know, we, we have those frozen things that we can just pop in the microwave. Okay. So what, what we're really talking about here, um, so for this additional $7, we are supposedly, we saved time because we use those convenient type foods. Um, so it was convenient and it was time saving for $7. But studies show that it really doesn't take that much longer to prepare those meals from scratch. Um, it just takes a little planning. And hopefully I'll give you some tools today that we can, we can use. Okay. Um, these are some healthy options that don't take any time. So if you're making good choices at the grocery store, and this conversation could lead into a whole conversation about label reading, but doing some obvious things that we know, um, like skim versus whole milk. Now, I, I wouldn't say it had to be skim. Skim or 1%, I sort of draw the line with 2% and whole over here, and skim and 1% over here. But if I can get people at least to get down to 1%, it's better. Um, if, if you're a person that does have diabetes, that um, you're looking at carbohydrate, it doesn't matter the carbs between skim versus whole or 1% versus 2%, it's the same carb. The difference is that saturated fat. And for all of us, I don't care if you're totally healthy, if you have six things going on in terms of your health, we do have to watch saturated fat. So this would be a healthy thing that we could do. And actually, skim milk is generally cheaper. Um, a piece of fruit versus a candy bar when it comes to a snack. I mean, these are some obvious things. Um, whole grain bread versus white. We get more bang for our buck nutritionally by choosing things that are whole grains. So when you're looking at that food label and you're looking at the ingredients, you want the first word to be whole. Not enriched, not potato flour, not wheat flour. It has to be whole wheat. So those are some, some things to look for versus the white bread. And, and a bread is something that we can get easily fooled on by titles split top wheat, quick trip wheat bread, pick and save wheat bread. Those are, these are just white breads. Color does not denote health, remember. I have patients come in and say, I eat brown bread. I don't care what color it is. Does that whole, whole grain in it, right? So, so that's, these are, again, some simple things that we can do um, that don't take any extra time. Okay, so let's talk about stretching that food budget. <clears throat> Um, so looking at, in your household, do you limit spending on little things? And I'll show you a slide on that. Um, a spending plan, you know, we get back to that word budget and saying, this is how much I have for food for the week. Now I'm going to start looking at newspapers. I'm going to start cutting coupons. I'm going to plan my meal and plan my shopping around that so I can save wisely. I was just at a graduation party on Friday night and, um, there were all of these cases of water in this gal's garage. And I said, oh my gosh, you guys got a lot of water here. And um, I was actually talking to her husband, and he said that that she, his, his wife, shops. Her, her, it's kind of a game to her to shop those coupons. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in, Patty. I am my stepdaughter in computer. Um, I'll be right back. To shop, to shop the coupons and save money. And he said she'll go to the store and save like $95. You know, so it's almost to her, it's like a game. Um, a weekly menu plan, that's a big deal. Again, it takes a little bit of time, but it saves a lot of um, guesswork out of, geez, it's, um, it's 11 o'clock, what am I having for dinner tonight at five? Because that's when the convenience type things come out. Oh, I don't have time, I'll just grab a blah, 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 right? Um, the shopping list, reading labels, Paying for the food and not the package. This is an enormous problem today because they have those 100 calorie snack packs. You're paying so much for those packages. So I really, really encourage you. This is this could be a huge saving if, if you are one that does this to buy, let's say, your bag of Triscuits or pretzels or whatever it is. Get some, go to Aldi and get those little snack bags and do it yourself. It's way cheaper. 
Um, now, I have had patients that, uh, to them, it's worth it because it limits their portion size. And they're not willing to get the big bag and do it. Okay, then for them it might be worth it for their health. But I am telling you, you are paying probably 70% of that cost in packaging. So that is an issue with those convenience type foods. All right, so this just shows you how little things can add up. So if I eat out five days a week and I spend $4 each time, this would be in a year's time. And I drink a soda every day and I go to the uh, vending machine three days a week and I go out on Friday night and I spend ten dollars on alcohol and I smoke that that would be more four dollars a day if you smoke a pack anyway <laughs> yeah right coffee 50 cents I mean no no you know you buy those specialty coffees it could be four dollars so this is definitely on the light side, but look at, you know, people, when, when you start putting numbers down and what you're spending weekly or monthly or yearly, you'd be amazed. And just to think, geez, do I really need to, um, do I really need to go out and have alcohol every Friday night? Could I save $500? <laughs> well, no, that's a personal question. <laughs> so um, I think it's important for us to look at budget and see where our money is going and where can we trim a little bit and maybe get rid of a few of these things and spend it more on some of those healthier options that we have available. Um, advertiser, flyers, shopping lists, sticking to it, clipping coupons, these are all huge savers. Now, unless you get stuck with, oh, there's a coupon for Keebler something that you normally would never eat, but I get a dollar off. Well, now nah, wait a minute, okay? We're looking for coupons for healthy items, for things that you would normally get. We're not using the dollar off coupon just because I get a dollar off and it might not be the best thing for me. But you can be really smart. These are all websites that are great websites to um, look for coupons. And of course we have our local papers that are awesome. All right. So when, when we're looking at more processed food, more processed food costs more money, money. So when we get down to just a plain baked potato, it's six cents. When, when now we're going into frozen french fries, so that's more processed, then we get into the frozen mash, then we get into the instant mash, and there's potato chips on the bottom. This is price per ounce. Look at the difference, look at what you're paying for. Again, the more processed something is, the higher the cost. There's nothing strawberry about a strawberry Pop-Tart, right? The further we get away from nature here, the less healthy it is. The further from nature, the less healthy. What kind of foods should we be eating? The foods that don't have labels. What doesn't have a label? Does an orange have a label? What's in an orange? An orange. What's in an apple? What's in a carrot? What's in a avocado? So that's what you have to focus on. When we just look at the healthy part, eating healthy on a budget, the eating healthy part, you want fruits and vegetables to make up the majority of your meal. And we can do that if we shop right. We can find that extra money. Get this stuff out of the cart, and then you'll have the, that money to buy the things that are good. Is it worth it to spend a little bit more to get the organic? We have, I am gonna talk about that. Um, really what we're talking about with organic is if you can peel it by the conventional. That's one sort of simple rule of thumb, um, and I will pass this out for you. Um, a couple of things worth buying if the price is the same, cauliflower, sweet peas, broccoli, cabbage. Um, skip baked organics if they're just too expensive, and if you're willing to do some prep work, buy the whole vegetables. Um, Buying conventional rice, bread, pasta, don't get those that say, you know, it's organic grains, doesn't matter. That's just, you're just paying more. It, um, yes, or, organic, does that mean they haven't used like pesticide? Yeah, the, um, and there is some regulation with the terminology and I did not bring that with me for organics, but there is a seal that they have and I don't, I did not take a picture of that, but that's something that um, you should watch for. Um, 
many so buying store brand dairy products many chain, chains have switched to buying from farmers that pledge not to use the artificial growth hormones so that's usually less um, splurge then there's a few things here that you might want to splurge on so I will give you this handout at the end but what I will tell you is if you look at organics and say there I just it's just too much that's just not gonna work it's more detrimental to your health to then not buy any fruits and vegetables because oh I can't buy I can't afford organic no you buy fruits and vegetables we'll wash them we'll do the best that we can yeah definitely more detrimental to not buy them so I'm not a big I don't buy a lot of organic I buy um, definitely in the summer I take advantage of the farmers markets so that's great and I grow some things at home so that's you know keep that in mind too okay um, so buying whole carrots cheaper than buying the little baby uh, carrots um, bananas of course those are pretty reasonably priced and a lot of fiber and potassium and B vitamins that's you know quick trip pretty cheap for our bananas popcorn um, the microwave popcorn is more expensive why Buy, it, buy kernels, it's healthier. Use good oil, the, 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 the liquid oils are healthy for us. Take, put a little bit of that in your pot and you know, do it the old fashioned way, so much better. Especially stay away from like ACT popcorn and I know that goes on sale at Fleet Farm and stuff, but the regular ACT has a lot of trans fat in it. That's what you have to be careful of with microwave popcorn. If you're going to use that, at least get the light versions of that or the 98%, 4% fat-free, whatever that is. Um, oatmeal, get it in the canister. You'll save $6. You get about 30 servings in a canister of oatmeal. You'd have to buy three packages of the individual ones, and it costs you about $5.60 more because of the packaging. So and salt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sugar. You're right, depending on the flavor. Absolutely. There can be a lot of things added. Oatmeal is a whole grain, by the way. Great. Um, peanut butter is well, inexpensive. What about the, well, what do you call it, the, yeah. the other kind of oatmeal? A steel cut? Yes, yep. thank you. Good, great. You know, they're all, all of the oatmeals are good. It's just a different way of processing it. Um, so probably the steel cut oats have less processing per se and it gives it, it gives your oh have you all had it? it gives it a more of a it's like hearty yeah. when yeah. you say yeah chewy yeah it's definitely heartier I think it's great but if someone says oh I don't like that then just get the regular oatmeal yeah all right um we've probably as women certainly we've heard this to shop the perimeter that's where the healthy choices are stay out of that snack aisle never on an empty stomach you know, it's, it amazes me, I was at the grocery store, I was in the spice section, and they had cinnamon sugar. Cinnamon sugar, like you paid for it in the little thingy. Seriously, now. How long does it take to take some sugar and put some cinnamon in there? And wow, I don't know, I, I, can't, I, I can't remember how much it was. But that is, to me, that's just crazy. Okay, so stretching your food budget, do it from scratch. You know, you can get shredded lettuce, or we can do it ourselves. Um, grating your own cheese, that saves a lot of money if you buy the pre-grated cheese. That's, that can be very pricey. Um, so now I probably would be less inclined to do that if I didn't have a food processor, which I do. So I put my brick of cheese in there for each one I put in there. Um, so it's just something to think about. Uh, okay, cooking large, you know, again, I don't know. Any of you folks, if you live with other people, if you live alone, if you have a spouse or not, but um, cooking a little bit extra, putting it in the freezer, they have great, um, almost pre-portioned uh, plates that you can put things in and put in your freezer now that it pops on it. So it's kind of like a homemade TV dinner, let's say, but it's but you made it. So I, I'm a huge fan of that. Um, yeah, Plan leftovers, I do a class on um, cooking for one or two and we spend a lot of time talking about things like this okay oh well here you go here's the popcorn um, 
cost for three and a half cups is uh, six cents for just doing it yourself on your stove top. There's the microwave bags. And then the 100 calorie microwave bags are even more expensive. So you can just see money wise. Do you guys use the unit pricing sometimes? Do you ever see that? Um, yeah. If they have that on there, that's really eye opening, isn't it? When I'm, you know, especially if I'm in a big, uh, like a Sam's Club or a Costco and I'm looking at that, that really makes a difference. Um, to say, geez, do I really want to pay a dollar thirty nine for each one of these, whatever it is? So, but I wish they'd be more consistent. I do too. Some, you know, this is so much per ounce, and this one's so much a pound, and this yeah. one's so much per portion. Yeah, exactly. Right, mm -hmm. right. I know it. Um, so again, looking for things on sale. And I caution you not to fall into the trap of buying things you normally wouldn't buy just because they're on sale. But there might be something that you say, oh, you know, geez, I love pea pods are on sale. I normally wouldn't buy that, but hey, I'm maybe I'll make a stir fry or maybe I'll make a, a, a pasta salad and I'll put those in there. So there are those ways of being creative. That's what I mean by that. Um, buying generic, that can be a huge savings. Now some people are, feel very strongly about certain food items that they say, ooh, I just do not like the generic of that. That's fine. You know, we'll, we have our opinions about that. But normally, you know, the, the store brand is a real brand that they have purchased and put their label on it. And then, of course, our portion sizes because the more we eat, the more expensive it is, right? And so again, when I talk about the eating healthy part of this, eating healthy on a budget, the eating healthy part is watching your portions. So looking at your plate, half of it should be vegetables, or in our case, it could be fruits and vegetables. A quarter of it is for your grain, and a quarter of it is for your protein. That's how we all should be eating. That's in a perfect world that we don't live in, okay? But that's, I, I just want you to start to think about that, because maybe you're a person that's just a meat and potato person. We live in meat and potato country here, believe me and fish fries. Meat, potatoes, <laughs> and fish fries. So, um, and brats and beer. Oh yes, and brats and beer, yep. So if we can just think, geez, you know, I bet I only have a vegetable three times a week. Well, maybe that's something that you can walk away with saying, I'm gonna try. Maybe not half of my plate will be a vegetable, but I'm gonna try to have a serving. And remember folks, a serving is just a half a cup. So I'm not asking you to eat a whole pineapple. I'm not asking you to eat the whole watermelon, although I have patients that do. So it's a half a cup of serving. And you might say, well, when I make broccoli, my gosh, I at least eat a cup and a half. Wow, you just ate three servings of vegetables. That's awesome. So half a plate vegetables, a quarter for your grain, or our potatoes, or rice, or pasta, and then a quarter for your protein. So that's the eating healthy part of that. That's the portion of it. That's also drives our budget. Because if I eat too much, it's not healthy for me, and now I don't have leftovers, and now I have to go buy more. So, load up on beans. Um, I am a huge fan of beans. Um, I do some classes for our cardiac group, and they all make fun of me, because when I do my cooking classes, it's always a bean recipe, because I want people to eat more beans. Now, um, some people just don't like them, okay? If you made said to me that peas are the healthiest thing in the world, I would say, sorry, not eating them. I hate peas. You love them, I know. I just, I've always hated them. So you do have to, but there are a lot of variety of beans. So if you've only tried one kind, I encourage you to try a different way or a different kind. Um, but they are really, really, they are the superfood. They are inexpensive. They're an awesome, the best source of fiber, they're an awesome source of protein. In fact, dietary guidelines are we should be eating a half a cup every day. And I don't know, I, I think I've met two people in my years of being a dietitian maybe that have done that. Is that cooked or is it dry? Oh, it's, it's cooked, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you're buying dry beans, it's even cheaper. And why do the beans at the food pantry sit there? Because we don't know how to cook them. It's foreign to us. That's what we have to work on teaching people. How can we use these dried beans and make them taste good? But if you do canned beans, what are you gonna do with them before you rinse, use them? Rinse, rinse. Yes. <laughs> Drain and rinse, get rid of that salt. Um, 
Can okay. you get rid of all the salt that 50 you drain? 50%. 50%. Yeah. Okay. 50% drain and rinse anything that comes in a can. Yeah. So vegetables too, yeah. Because they can be quite salty. So that's why you should buy frozen. Another reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, they, they, they buy canned for a lot of different reasons. And if that's what you have, I'm not saying that's bad. It would be worse not to eat the vegetables than to say I'm not going to eat them because all I can buy is canned. That's worse. Buy the canned, drain them, and rinse them. So, okay. Um, obviously, in-season produce, this is a great time of year for us here in Wapaka. Um, and this is just on composting. That's probably a whole different, um, a whole different talk. Um, and just a little bit on garbage. Um, so when we go to the store and we have these intentions to buy these vegetables, and I'm going to buy carrots and celery and broccoli and peppers, and I buy all of these great things that I'm going to eat this week, and I put them in my crisper, and two weeks later I take them out and throw them in the garbage, right? <laughs> I've done it. We have these great intentions, and then we get busy, and I, whatever, for whatever reason. So what I'm encouraging you to do is one of two things. Either take the time when you get home, cut them up. Cut them up, wash them, put them in a Ziploc, a Tupperware, I don't know, whatever fits in your fridge, because we're all lazy. Everyone in this, we are inherently, we're lazy, because if every time I want a carrot, if I had to peel it and wash it, nah, it's not gonna happen. But if I can reach in my Tupperware and grab a handful, now I'm gonna take that in my lunch, I love vegetables, but I'm not gonna cut up my pepper every morning and do all this, so take 10 minutes, wash it, Get it ready, because then the people in your house will eat it. Okay, if you say, uh, not even, uh, it's too much work, I'm not gonna do that. Okay then, when we're buying broccoli, you're paying it by the pound, or cauliflower. And then what do you do when you get home? A lot of us cut the flour off and we throw the stem away. Now some of us might save that for soup or something if we're really on top of it. Or when you take that head of cauliflower, you cut it in half, I cut out that you know, I cut the flowers off the top and I throw it away. I've paid for that by weight. So, would it be more cost effective for me to have bought the, the cauliflower heads, cauliflower broccoli, carrot mix? You know how you can buy those in the bag? It costs more, but did it cost more? Because I just threw away. So, if that's the only way that you will eat them, buy them that way. If you say, uh, I'm not paying an extra 75 cents for that bag, then when you come home, wash, cut it up, get it ready to go, okay? Again, it's more detrimental to your health to not eat those, okay? So super important, but that garbage check is, is a big deal. Or the leftovers, we gotta plan, right? So if I've got leftover chicken, then I put it in the fridge, and then three days later you go, oh shoot, I should have done something with that chicken. So that's why I have a menu planner here to, to work it out, you know. Really, you only need to cook maybe three days a week if you plan it right. And again, that's another class, but um, super important. Um, this is just going over some beans. You know, the difference between those dried beans and the canned beans, big difference. Um, here are the eggs, regular, eggs, and then we have Eglin's Best, and then egg beaters, more processed. Egg beaters are egg whites, um, so maybe your doctor. I personally am a huge fan of eggs. Eggs have gotten a bad rap. I will tell my patients an egg a day is perfectly fine. They're actually, um, you know, for six grams of protein and 70 calories, you can't go wrong. And they're inexpensive. So I am a big fan. Now, egg beaters are the egg whites. I would prefer to use something less processed and to just take two egg whites and do something with my yolks. Some people give them to their dog. I haven't done that yet. Um, what are egg ones best? Are they, are they changed in some way, or are they just eggs? Uh, they're, I think, aren't they like an organic? I think they're like an organic, yeah. Or they have omega, more omega-3s, something like that. Yeah, because they eat certain Yes. Oh, eat them the free range, well, etc. Yeah. Yes. Um, All right. I think I've talked about that. I don't. I don't. Yeah. No. I don't know. Let me do it. Okay. We talked about the unit pricing. Um. 
again, bigger packages are not always better depending on how many people are in your house. Um, these are just going, again, unit prices. So if I get four ounce juice boxes and I get eight in a pack, mm -hmm. the unit price is 44 cents a piece. Mm -hmm. If I would buy a can of juice, it would only be 17 cents. Again, we get back to packaging. Huge dollars there, folks. Huge dollars. Um, there is our ground beef. So um, anytime with our meat you see the word loin in it, that would be a healthier choice. So you're looking for that versus, of course, the chuck, the regular ground meat, that kind of thing. Be careful with ground turkey, by the way. If never buy the ground turkey that comes in a tube because that they grind all the parts of the turkey. You have to get it from the turkey store. It's called the turkey store. Is it Genio? You know, it comes yeah. fresh. Yeah. Buy fresh ground turkey versus that frozen tube. You, you'd be better off just buying ground meat. Um, all right, so let's just talk quickly here about some of the dates because this can be confusing. The sell by date that's found on perishable things. And that's the grocery store, the, the date that they need to sell the product by. It might still be safe for the consumer, okay? The use by or expires on, that we have to pay attention to. That's the one that we want to have that gone by that date. Sometimes you see codes on a package or on the bottom of a can. That is not an indicator of any kind of safety at all, okay? Um, milk, what they tell us is that that can you can drink that about five days after the sell by date it is really still good if it has been refrigerated you know you take it out you pour your glass of milk you put it back in the fridge that type of thing not that it's set out all morning your kids didn't put it back in the refrigerator not that that's ever happened to me <laughs> okay sometimes you'll see the best if used by date that is um, on shelf stable products that is voluntary um, reported date, it's likely to stay best if you used it. So if my box of, what would I buy? What's my box of cereal? Would, it has a best if used by date, probably is still gonna be good after that date. Um, it's not an indication of safety, so keep that in mind. Probably wouldn't keep it too long. After I took um, microbiology in, in college, I just really am a stickler of throwing things away after they made us grow things on petri dishes. Ooh. All right. Um, this is just getting into a little bit of meats. Um, there are different cuts of meat. There's the prime that has a lot of fat in it. It's that marbling that you see in steak that makes it juicy. Prime rib, ribeye, those times, kinds of things. Select that has less fat in there, so it, we would say that could be more tough meat, but it's generally less expensive. So maybe using that in a slow cooker, um, you know, I guess you'd have to look at different ways of cooking that. If you are going to use ground beef and you want to save some money here, you could buy a lesser cut, like buying regular ground beef. If you're going to make something that's going to take on an intense flavor, like chili, tacos, sloppy joes, you can brown that meat, drain it, put the meat in a colander, and rinse it off. So by rinsing it, you're getting rid of about 50 more percent of that fat than you did by just draining and patting. Drain it, because if you're going to make something that takes on an intense flavor, then you're going to take that and add your taco seasoning or your chili, whatever, and you won't even notice. It'd be gross to rinse our meatloaf. We're not going to do that. Or a hamburger patty. Spend the money and get a decent cut for that. But again, if you're going to make something, you could save a little bit of money that way. Um, okay. You know, if again, if we're really looking at dollars and you're going to use chicken meat to make... Um, Let's say you're going to do, you want to do a stir fry, and then you're going to do a chicken salad, and then you're going to do a chicken casserole. Obviously, buying a whole chicken versus buying chicken breasts for that would save you money. So this, go, this gets back into planning. Um, and let's just pass this out. So this, is, um, this isn't the be-all, end-all. This is a simple thing that I put together years ago 
to plan menu. This is just Monday through Sunday. And on the side, is it, it has entree, starch, fruit and vegetable, and miscellaneous. So that for people, I, it takes a little bit of time to put it together, but think about in a week. So if I cook a chicken on Monday, here I'm gonna have chicken salad, here I'm gonna have a chicken casserole. Thursday, I'm gonna cook um, a beef roast. And you know, again, use up use up those leftovers these two days. So only cook a couple. We we may make way too, way too much work for ourselves. Cook a couple times a week. If you have a family, three times a week maybe. Plan the leftovers. It can be very very helpful. Here again is getting into convenience. Um, our pre cooked chicken breasts, a dollar ninety eight chicken nuggets. 55 cents boneless chicken breast and there's the bone-in chicken breast so again as it gets more processed the price goes up significantly get back to our scratch cooking portion control here's what we were just talking about generally we eat about 90 percent of the food on our plate I don't care if you have an 11 inch plate, which is our typical dinner plate, or if you're using a nine inch plate, which is the size of plate we all should be using, like our salad plates, you're gonna eat about 90% of what's on your plate. It's just like if you go to the movie theater, you buy a large popcorn, you eat it. You buy a small popcorn, you eat it. There's tons of studies on that. You eat out of the bag of M&Ms, you'll probably eat the whole bag. <laughs> you eat out of the little bag of M&Ms, you're gonna eat the whole bag. Use portion control. Never sit down with the bag. Portion out what you're going to eat in your bowl and take it and sit down. Sit down with the Fleet Farm thing of nuts. Just <laughs> eat, 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 eat. That's what happens. I've yeah. never done that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So anyway, so by using a smaller plate, you can significantly re reduce your intake, and it saves money. Again, it's we're saving money. Um, Drinking water, we spend a lot of money on bottled water, and again, you're paying for packaging. Um, get yourself a water bottle and fill it up with some ice. A couple times a day, you're saving money. Okay, I wanna get to, you know, <coughs> um, again, this goes back to our meal planning, and again, I do a, that's a different class, but looking at chili, casserole, soups, using, plan your leftovers don't throw them away you've just thrown away dollars um, here's the price difference between whole and we just talked about that whole and two percent one percent skim um, I want people to be choosing in this either one percent or skim that's an easy thing that we can do that doesn't require a lot of planning um, so with our grains especially with rice and pasta stay away from the mixes the lipton the nor uh, noodle mixes rice mixes rice aroni you'll get a day's worth of sodium in about a half a cup um, plan that and it's so much cheaper put your own seasoning in so you have control of it and it's cheaper um, we already talked about the oats um, Okay, we talked about popcorn a little bit. Just as an aside, because we do, like I said, we live in meat and potato country, I try to get people to try some different grains. The number one that I try to get them to change to is um, barley, because that's something that's not too weird. <laughs> I mean, most people have at least had that. It's not like quinoa or millet or something, but barley, we've probably had that once or twice in our life. So you can, anytime you have a rice recipe, you can substitute barley for it. You can get quick cooking barley, just like you can get quick cooking rice. But remember that the longer a grain has to cook, really the better it is for you nutritionally. So again, minute rice versus, um, you know, some brown rice or uh, jasmine or, what's the other one that I'm thinking of, basmati. Um, so anyways, so consider using barley in one of your rice recipes that you have and you'll get double the amount of fiber which is what we really want um, okay we're in a great season now for fruits and vegetables I think I've talked about all of these things over buying vegetables can be one of the biggest waste of money we just talked about that get it home cut it up get it ready to eat because otherwise it'll come from your crisper into your garbage yes Does drying change it nutritionally Dried vegetables? Dry. Oh, 
like in a dehydrator? Oh. Um, well, you know, it's for fruit, it would become a little more calorically dense. Um, so that, you know, depending on what someone's issue would be, it's just like, you know, when we look at raisins, yeah. it's very calorically dense. Or someone with diabetes, it'd be a lot of sugar and just a little bit, um, and a little amount. Um, so that I, that's the thing I would caution like people beans, about. Like beans and tomatoes, I like to dry in the summer, and then I use them in the winter, throw them in. Oh! But does that, does that take anything away from I, it nutritionally? Boy, you dry your vegetables. I don't know, I'd have to look it up. I would like have dry to look kale. that up. You can dry mm -hmm. it down to powder and then just throw <coughs> yes. it mysteriously oh, into oh. everything. Oh, wow, well, well, I like, I always like to hide things in there. That's a great <laughs> idea, yeah. To look that My husband thinks he doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a last night supper dish, right? <laughs> so, uh, really, the rest of my slides are looking at what you can buy for under ten dollars. <clears throat> and most of the time, I'm comparing like these are chicken taquitos. You know, you can get those at um, Quick Trip, right? Um, so, a package of those versus buying. Corn on the cob, carrots, some fresh chicken, whole wheat bread, and bananas. So again, get away from the process. It takes a little time. It takes a little planning. Um, so this is um, Neapolitan ice cream. That's $5.98 for $5.43. I got brown rice, some activity yogurt, and some silk milk. Again, these are just some... Oh, there we go. French fries, five forty-four. I could get a uh, mixed vegetables, ten pounds of potatoes, a pound of bananas, and whole wheat pasta. Again, smart spending. Less processed. The further away from nature, the less healthy. We have to eat foods without labels. There's Coke. There's our beer. Mm. Uh, cheese sticks. Only in Wisconsin do we fry our cheese. <laughs> That's not real, isn't it? That was that's twenty one dollars and seventy six cents. So that's the four Whopper four Whopper combo meals at Burger King, and instead you get all of this stuff: beans, vegetables, ground turkey, broccoli, Boca burgers, potatoes, strawberries. That's crazy. But see, that's what we are. It's easier to order a pizza than it hit Ralph, right? Yes. That's our problem. It just takes a little bit of time. Oh. I, my father, um, I, he made his living at owning Kentucky Fried Chicken, mm -hmm. so he made me swear when I was going to become a dietitian never to say anything bad about <laughs> <laughs> So I'm surprised I even included that one in here, <laughs> as long as he doesn't see it. You um, mentioned those uh, frozen steamed vegetables. Yes. Um, I haven't really looked at those packages, but is there salt in there? No, not if you buy just, you know, if it's green beans. Now, if it says seasoned, yes. Oh, okay. Or if it's in a sauce, you know, it's like a yeah. cheese sauce. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. But if you're just buying like green beans or corn right. or broccoli, yeah. Yeah. Good question. Um, and this is just a little little note on um, calories, but I usually like to talk in terms of sugar. If you drink two cans of soda. Every, no, if you drink one can of soda every day, is that how it was? I don't know if it's one or two cans. Cans. Now, you can hardly find cans anymore. They're mostly the 20-ounce bottles nowadays. In a machine, it's mostly 20-ounce bottles. But two cans a day is over five pounds of sugar in a month. Wow. Yeah. So this is how many calories. If you drink one can of soda, it'd be 1,200 calories. It's just, it's just a lot of sugar. 10 teaspoons of sugar in a can of soda. It's too much. And now kids bring in the, they don't even bring, well, they certainly don't monkey around with a can. Even the 20 ounce bottles, they're bringing in liter into the high school, into their locker. Oh my so, God. And what's this, what's that displacing? Milk. Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah, oh. the Mountain Dew. Yeah. Okay. Well, we probably, so you can eat healthy on a budget. It just requires a little more time. Um, and I have lots of handouts here. So you don't have to take these. If you don't want one, pass it on. These are just uh, kind of a summary of some of the tips that we talked about. Um, I had an intern with me a couple, was it not last summer, the summer before, and I asked her to go to the different grocery stores here in town 
and to, to put together a healthy cart and an unhealthy cart and compare costs. So I have Pick and Save, Piggly Wiggly, and Aldi here, and she did a really nice job. This is supposed to be in a trifold, but I didn't have time for that, so I just ran it off for you. It's, it's really kind of interesting. She did a very nice job. Um, and this is from, um, if you ever want to go to a great website, it's uh, choosemyplate.gov, and they have some wonderful information there. This is, this is two weeks of menus um, for eating healthy on a budget. Um, so if you want to take one of these. <laughs> I guess we didn't get these stapled, but I'm going to pass this around. So this is the first page. This is the second page to that. Here's a grocery list for it. I'm going to make it easy for you. And then there's also um, a, a pantry list that goes along with it. So. Any questions for me? We can do that. I'll pass this around. I don't get it. Do you want to take one of those? Questions, comments, concerns? I have a question on microwaving. Do you have any thoughts on that? What does that do to... It really doesn't change, like, I know I hear that a lot about vegetables. Right. It really doesn't change that much. Um, that went around the internet for a long time. There were all these things about how awful it is. Um, as long as you don't cook it to mush, you know, it's, hmm. quite, it's, what, it's what we do. It does not leach out that many vitamins and minerals. So don't worry about that. I think it's almost better than like boiling it in a pot. Mm -hmm. yes. and, yeah, and there's some that oh, leaches out with that. Yeah, you just put a little bit of moisture in. Right, right. I mean, uh, yep, I think it's, I think it's a great tool, frankly. Yeah, we steam every dish together. Oh, do you? Steamer. Oh, I love those two. Put away. Okay. Awesome. Yep, yep. Great. Do you? Yeah, do I, you? Cook, I cook the stems. <laughs> yeah. And you can eat them raw in a salad. They're crunchy. Uh, peel that outside yeah. Yeah. off yeah. and yeah. use the inner. Yeah. The stems away. Broccoli, yeah. broccoli yeah. cauliflower. Put them in soup too. Put them in soup. That's what I do a lot too. But they are good. I feel that. Yeah. I know. I know. But see, it's a lot of work to peel that stem. Right? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> That's what people will say. I usually just cook them in right with the others. I put those in first. Good. I steam those first, and then I throw the heads in yep. uh, after another couple minutes. Excellent. Yeah. Good. So the easy way for beans, can you just like put them in a pot and cover them with cold water and soak them overnight? Yes. Before you could then actually put them into your... Okay. But you'd want to drain and rinse those. Right. Yeah. Take away any that are floating on top, throw those away. Okay. And then drain them and rinse them. And what do you do for a seed? I mean, how would you cook beans to make them good? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have so many like, bean recipes. I could write the name. So just like I put a them in a dish. I, I, what I, I've even okay. taken, I'm a huge seasoning fan. I use a lot of different seasoning. I love Penzi's spices. They have wonderful, wonderful things. They've taken a stand on salt free. So they have a great majority of their things that don't even have salt in them. Um, so I'll open a can of garbanzo beans and drain those and rinse them and put them in a pan. And I have a couple of Penzi spices that I'll just sprinkle on those and heat them up. And it's a side. Mm -hmm. That's my side. What no. type of a spice do you gen would you use? Do you know what? It's I'm not going to pronounce it right. Punjabi, something oh, like Punjabi. that. Yeah, it's I like know what a you're saying. it's yeah. it's like an Indian I kind of spice. Right. Am I? Yeah, that's I love that spice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll just put that on there. You could even put a little bit of olive oil in there, but it doesn't need it. 
but you could put some out. I'm a big fan of flavored oils. Not, you know, if you're going to cook some, some pasta or some kind of a grain using just a little flavored olive oil on there, putting some, roast some vegetables. How is it easy just to roast vegetables? Oh my goodness. I say yeah. don't buy that flavored olive oil. You take your olive oil and you throw your lemon in there if you want lemon olive oil or your whatever you want. Yes. It's so expensive to buy those. It's very oh. expensive. If you've ever flavored ones, some of those. just flavor your own. It's oh, yeah. Same difference. Same difference. Especially this time of year if you grow some herbs in your garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take that thine, take that basil. Crush them. And olive oil is better for you than Olive oil is canola. Um, olive oil and canola are at the top of the list in terms of, but all any oil, well, anything that's liquid at room temperature is an unsaturated fat, and those are better for us. So a saturated fat is hard at room temperature. So if I left my stick of butter out here and I came back tomorrow, it would still be a stick of butter, right? Mm -hmm. If I put a steak out here that has fat on the outside or my chuck roast and I came back tomorrow, the fat would still be there, it wouldn't be melted. Hard at room temperature, coconut oil cool. comes yeah, in a jar, doesn't it? Yeah. It's hard at room temperature, that's saturated. That's bad. Right. Hard at room temperature is saturated, that will clog your arteries. Now, should I eat none? No, we have to have some, but really, we get plenty. And that's usually something that we have to watch in our diet because we get so much of it. So be careful. Every time you're adding a tablespoon of any kind of fat, whether it's butter, or coconut oil or olive oil, you're adding 110 calories. So I take my good zucchini that I just grew and I put a bunch of olive oil in the pan to saute it. Oh my goodness. Use any kind of fat sparingly. We don't need much. So be careful with that, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Now what are trans fats? Because I was talking about oh, trans fats. Trans fat is a man-made fat where they take a liquid fat that's healthy for you and they whip it until it's not hard like a saturated fat, but it's no longer in that healthy liquid state. It's somewhere here in between, and that process of whipping it is called hydrogenation. Oh. So when you see the words partially hydrogenated in an ingredient list, that is trans. Very bad. Which is very bad. Oh, yeah. It's just not good. Mm -hmm. They don't have to tell you on a label if it's in there until there's 0.5 grams or more. So be careful. Hmm. You really have to look at the ingredient list. It's weird. How could just whipping it? Yeah. Do they must add they must something it's, it's, to it to it's, the whip process? It's taking something. out a hydrogen to the chain of the fat okay. of the fatty acid. Right. It's a it's taking out a hydrogen, and then it, it's a chemical reaction that takes place. So why do they want to use it? It's cheap, and it makes things shelf stable. So the Twinkies can stay out there for 20 years, <laughs> yeah. right? That's yeah. why they do it. Yep. So There's like there, there is the FDA is looking at banning it, taking it out of all of our foods, which would be great. Uh -huh. Yeah, but you'll see it in like store bought cookies, donuts, um, a few maybe some dairy products. They took it out of chips a long time ago. They took it out restaurants took it out a long time ago, but you'll still see traces of it. Sometimes you know at the bottom of an ingredient list or maybe in the middle. You know, say partially hydrogenated. Your can frosting, loaded. Two, two grams of trans fat and two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, there's more than two tablespoons of frosting on a piece of cake. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Be very careful with that. Yeah. Not good stuff. So. Well, thank you very well, much. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Are these extras? Yes, sir. These are extras. Okay. Thank you. When are they ever going to get after the soft drink business? Hey, it wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I do not know. I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. What would kids today do? Well, or I shouldn't just say kids, adults. right? <laughs> no, adults is terrible. It's just terrible. I know. Well, my daughter went on a field trip, and I had just given her a bottle of water, yeah. you know, field trip wise. And she came home from school, and she's like, "Mom, I was the only one yeah. that didn't oh. have a soda. Oh. Everyone had root beer and Sprite, and oh. and I'm like, one did have a Mountain Dew, oh. and I was like, oh man, you know, a Red Bull. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's really taken. Oh, that's, uh, well, that's a whole that's pushing it. <laughs> but she was the only one. I mean, oh, isn't that mm. amazing? I you never know, I would like it. I'm drinking water, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not going to say, you know, it's not like, I, I tell people, this isn't like I'm saying you're never going to eat a chocolate chip cookie, you're never going to have a Coke. That's not, that's not it. 
it's what we do most days of the week mm -hmm. that counts. So can right. she have a soda sometimes? Yes, sure. she can have a soda right. sometimes. So then she had a field trip just last week, and so I was with chaperoning that one, and yeah. so I did let her have See? one, and okay. we split it, you know, and yeah. so then it was just like, Absolutely. I, I really observed everybody, and they really did. Yeah. Or those Kool-Aid, like the Kool-Aid that's already in the plastic, and oh. you're already, it's already made, and you just tear the cap off. Yeah. Oh. One of the kids had two of them. Wow. I mean, it was already, the Kool-Aid was already in there, and you just, just drink it. Wow, I haven't yeah. seen those. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like in, uh, like Lunchables. Oh, oh, is it like a plastic It's a plastic thing, thing and you like twist a, it on top. Yeah, wow. the cool guys on it. Mm -hmm. I think I What's your take on all the power bars and everything? I know you're going to say probably packaging, but you know they have a lot of calories in them. I think for this little power bar. Yes. And, yep. um, and that's exactly cheese. right. Because some of them, you know, when you get up into the 200 calorie range, that's yeah. a meal replacement that's for something. That's a lot. So many of them are just glorified candy bars. <laughs> yeah. And again, yeah, how far away from nature is that? Sugar. <laughs> so it's just, you know, do we do we need to have that? Does it have a place? Yeah, it probably has a place. But for people, again, I get back to all of us being lazy. Oh, I'm just going to grab this bar. Well, what if you grabbed an apple and some peanut butter and that handful of vegetables out of there? Get some ranch. Dip it in ranch if that's the only way you're going to eat it. But it just, we have to make the food at our house available, easy, for us to eat real food. Because, yeah, it, it becomes too easy to say, I'll just get a Red Bull and a, pop, and a what do they call those? Uh, yeah, whatever they're called. Uh, but like you said, too, I think... Power bars. Yeah. The older you are, you know, I'm used to making, when my kids were little, we would make our own barbecue. How many people make their own barbecue anymore? Yeah. I bet very seldom. I know. But I remember doing that all the time, and that yeah. spread a long way. It's a, uh, but now you buy the cans. Oh, you know, yeah. The man or whatever. Yeah. But the, the, the kids oh. nowadays, they don't know how to do that. Well, they only know the... Yeah, and that's the problem. That's the problem. Yep, kids don't know. That's how they're growing up. It's too bad. It is sad. It worries you about the health then when they get to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What is it going to be? Yeah. We need to slow down. Slow. That's what it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, it does. Because when it's I was the, much. my kids were that age and we were off doing soccer games, I mean, we hit Subway, but we hit Subway how many times sure. during the week? Because that's what we did to grab dinner. Right. You know, just because the timing of the game and yeah. everything. You're so, working, your yeah. husband works, I gotta go, blah, blah. it's just a madhouse. Yeah. And tear pressure. I was the only one that had a bottle of water. Yeah. You know, you feel mm -hmm. sorry for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 So you don't think mm -hmm. that would happen with soda, but I think that's how mm -hmm. the kids feel. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you thank so you much. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome.